Psalms 33, 3. This morning I'm going to be uh, talking about the, the phrase that the Bible talks about, uh, a new song. Um, you know, we've got different songs that are out now, he turns my morning into dancing and all these different phrases or whatever, but you'll, you'll hear a scriptural term many times planted in the min middle of that um, where he gives us a new song. And um, this is part of, of prayer. And I think uh, we have to understand that prayer isn't just speaking, right, to God. Um, it's listening. It's waiting. Um, it's seeking. It's invoking. It's praising. It's worshiping. Back to speaking. To you know, I mean, it, it's an ebb and flow. And I think if we just look at it relationally. Um, if you're trying to really uh, be intimate with somebody, like a spouse, if, if all it is is digital talking and you're not a good listener and um, there's no adoration for each other, there's no uh, affirmations or anything like that, it's just speaking. You can have a relationship like that, but it's, it's pretty dry. It's pretty like it's a kind of a flat line, um, monotone. But there's something uh, about relationship when it includes a lot of the things that I just talked about. And so Psalms 33, 3 says, sing to him a new song, play skillfully on the strings with a loud and joyful sound. Well, you might not even play an instrument, but he's invoking a new song. And that's not the only place it says it, just for sake of time, it's repeatedly, it says it in the Old Testament many different ways. And um, they used to, because uh, they don't have radio back then, right? They don't have uh, the different things that we have access to. You're not going to have, you know, something on iTunes or something to download. And so there, there's, there's nothingness unless you're just walking around singing way back then, right? And then they would bring in the, the people, the musicians. That was a pretty big deal because you know, not everybody had an instrument. And, and to own an instrument and even pass that down generationally was just like huge, where we can just go buy a guitar, break it, and go get another one. You know, I mean, there's, there's something, something that was really extra precious about the musicians when they brought, brought them in. And, and for uh, the scriptural purpose, they understand that they carry anointing, like David, right? But what happens is, um, you know, so it, back then they, they said um, when they would bring the, the wandering minstrels in during the Middle Ages, uh, they traveled from court to court, and they thought it uh, prudent to change the words of their song, because many times they just had the same tune, same tune. Uh, like we do a lot of times, row, row, row your boat, right? And then we'll teach a child an, some other thing about colors or whatever, but we use the same tune. Different words, same tune. And so they, and when they come through, people would sing with them or enjoy that, but then they would be like, we need a new song. And many times they'd have the same tune, but they'd have to change it up. So part of in the Hebrew, what they're talking about, a new song, is there's a change up. There's a change up that, that, that needs to happen. God's people were singing a new song um, in the scriptures, and, and uh, that, that indicated differently than just you're hanging out with some musicians, you know, in the world. That indicated that when they came with a new song, it's because there was a, a new thing God was doing. There was a new song. Now, in praise and worship, it was really good to sing some of the old songs, you know, from way back. They carried anointing, mix them in with the new songs or whatever. But even the old songs that we're singing many times that are brought forward, they're done in a new way. Have you noticed that? Yeah. And um, uh, it, it's just a total different uh, deal. I was ministering at a church just recently, and um, they had background music they were playing. I said, do you have any music playing in the background? I never checked it out beforehand. But it was uh, uh, one of these things where it was like really old school. Bum, 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 bum. You know, and you're like, okay, I didn't know that. That's what you're going to pay. I didn't know, right? And, uh, and then uh, we're, I was ministering with, uh, or she was ministering, Mary Roloff was in, and recently, same kind of thing. Um, and it just had 
had no anointing for what was going on right now. But at the time, probably, that it came out, there was an anointing on it. Because it, it came out in a way, it came out of someone's spirit, something new at that time. Right? So you ride the anointing of something and until he moves you on to a new thing. And it's the same thing even in our testimonies. If we're still testifying of what happened in 1965, and I remember the time, you know, when they say, is there any testimonies? Yes, in 1965, my aunt got healed. Well, that's really nice. And that, that has power. But what has he done like yesterday? So a new song indicates there's a new thing going uh, uh, on. Ezekiel 18.31 says, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you, you a new heart and a new spirit. So God's into new. But he's not into uh, new and then just wreck the foundation that he built. So amazing grace is still amazing grace. The song, right? So he, he's not going to go, well, that's just not of God anymore. We're just going to get rid of it. But it can come forward sung in a new way yeah. from when it was written. Yeah. Um, and it can come forward uh, singing with a new heart and for a new purpose with an, um, an added message to it or whatever it is. Um, so the word song is a type of lyrical song, a religious song, and it, it appears several times in Ezra and Nehemiah to refer to songs of Levitical choirs. In Nehemiah 12, 46, for example, Nehemiah recounts that in David's day, music directors led songs of praise. And there, this is just talking about songs, right? Um, but when we look at prayer, prayer has songs in it. Or you're that dry prayer person, just digital, I'm just talking to God, I'm just telling him what we need. Remember I said prayer is you talking, you listening, you invoking, you crying out, you being silent, you singing praises, you worshiping, back to talking. See, there's more um, avenues of this. So if the part of praise that's a part of prayer stays the same all the time, and then many times it follows our same old prayers that we pray all the time, well, God's wanting to do a new thing. Yeah. He doesn't throw out the old thing to do the new thing. Right? He refreshes it. He refreshes it. That's why he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't go, I was the same yesterday, um, you know, way back. And now today, well, I'm changing it up. No, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. But waves of how he does things many times um, will come. Just aspects of his character and his countenance will shine on us. Things we've never seen before. That's what makes our song new. So uh, it would indicate that religion can be on us, and that's what would keep us in the same old, same old. And to look at uh, very religious situations and say there's nothing in that that's got, no, because at one time that was revival and it brought it to a certain point. The problem is it went stagnant. It stayed there. The prayers stay the same. Everything stays the same. In fact, it might stay, look like it's staying the same and even go backwards. Because he wants a new thing. This is where the New Testament talks about us uh, having uh, uh, waves. And that doesn't use the term waves, but um, outpourings, um, great awakenings in our spirit. Because we're looking for something new. So when we come uh, to our church and we come in the, in the aspect of like, well, I already know it's going to happen today. They're going to do the announcements, praise is going to go so long, and this is the thing, and here's how it's going to all roll out. We're actually not looking for anything new. In fact, we find comfort in just knowing that's how it's going to roll. We plan our day around it. We just, you know, everything. But when you begin to look for new, you are seeking, like, show me your face, God. I want to see you in a different way. I want to see your character like I've never seen it before. Think about how many Bible studies you've attended. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to basically um, uh, uh, well-founded Christians here right now. Think about how many Bible studies uh, we've attended. Then think about how much of that word we've retained. How you know you retained it is because you're living it out. There's just something about our, our, our nature that doesn't allow that. This is where the scripture says um, that if you abide in his word and he abides in you, that means it's living in you. That's when you go, I retain that. 
That's mine. Well, once you retain it, it brings about a new thing in you. It can be the same scripture. How many of us, I mean, I read the story of Lazarus uh, since 1982 when I gave my life to Christ over and over. You know how many sermons I've heard on that? But the summer fest where I preached on, because this was a revelation from God to me, probably a bunch of people already knew this. But he made something new inside of me when they said, you know, you should have got here. Lazarus already died. You know, should have been here, Lord. I mean, oh, but that's okay. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we know that he's going to raise in the resurrection. There were two things that he said during that story. He said, didn't I not tell you I would show you my glory? <sighs> There's deep meaning to that. Did I not tell you I was going to show you my glory? So he lays there dead, whatever. Didn't I tell you I was going to show you my glory? That went right over their head. Well, that went over my head for years. Same story that's been taught and read and everything else. And all of a sudden it was like, you apply that to life situations that you're going through. The promises he already spoke to us makes you stop and go, hold on a second. He promised he was going to reveal himself to us in this situation. Didn't I not say that I was going to show you my glory? There's a couple different phrases there. And then um, they said, well, yeah, we know he'll rise in the resurrection. And he looks at him and goes, I am the resurrection and the life. Like, didn't you get the memo on that one? I'm right here. I'm the resurrection and the life. And, and so it, and then you take that when it abides in you, it causes you to come up into a new way of thinking. Religion stays in the old. Um, craziness gets rid of the old and invents something new. We build our own new doctrine like God is now somebody totally different than he's ever been. No, he's the same yesterday, today, and, be, and, and forever. But there are waves and sides of him you've never seen. So when he says that he wants you to have a new song, what that indicates is um, in, in the Hebrew really uh, uh, talks about fresh mercies being poured out on you. Um, and then that comes up into a new song. You realize what you did deserve, he's withholding. Oh, I got to sing about this. It comes up in a realization of his love that it comes out of you in a different way. And your faith comes alive in a different way. So we need a new song. The body of Christ needs a fresh anointing and a new song. But it doesn't mean to uh, disregard the old anointing that was there. So when you're building a home, you don't just go, well, I've been on this foundation building this, but now I'm bored of that. So I'll get rid of the foundation and I'll start building a wall. No, <laughs> no. He, he creates in us this thing where here's the foundation, the scriptural foundation, and then we're going to build on this thing. And we're, it's going to appear like you, you see a foundation of a house, you, you drive by and they're, you know, laying the cement blocks and everything. And you're like, there it is, I guess. I have no idea what it's going to look like. But every day that they're working on it, by the time they get to the marble countertops, all of that kind of stuff. Now, I mean, it's like you come in, and every time you'd come in within a few days, it's like a new song is going on in that house. Like, whoa, they put the floors in, right? Whoa, they got windows in this place now. And all of a sudden, it unfolds that way. That's what that indicates when it says he wants you to have a new song. And... Uh, so our old situation that's been getting old to us needs a new song. Because if you've been singing something and it holds the line on it, that's great. But when you get a, a download from the Holy Spirit that causes you to come up and sing in a new way for the joy of the Lord, out of those songs comes the joy of the Lord. It comes up. The reason the joy of the Lord is there is not just because an anointing hit you and made you laugh. It's an anointing that says, I get it. I saw it. Revelation knowledge. Rhema words just came to me. I got a new song coming out of my heart now. Whoo, I'm going to pray with that new song. I'm going to praise out of that new song. See it? So it's victory. And it is a sign that victory is going on in a church. If I visit a church and I'm speaking there, and the next year I come back and it's still doing the same thing, it makes me question what's going on. 
There should be a new song. Right? There should be a new excitement, uh, a new thing. And, uh, and then also the other thing is when we're, when we're praying on different things, you know, we got a lot of new things going on. Mission 61 is fairly new. Fusion is fairly new. Uh, Lindsay's class is fairly new. There's outreaches that are fairly new. Those are new. But if we use the old song to have victory in those new things, it's only going to come up to a certain point. Right? As we push into the reason, we have to change as fast as this thing is changing. In fact, it'd be better if we changed quicker than what's unfolding. Does that make sense? So there's a yieldedness that has to happen that really says, anything you say, Lord, I'm willing to do. I'm here to lay down my life. I am here. I need a new song in my heart, a, a time of refreshing in fact, uh, one of the, the uh, new mercies that it talks about in other scriptures literally means sing a different tune. Well, we sing some tunes sometimes, woe is me. That's a good old song, you know. <laughs> uh, maybe tomorrow, <laughs> if tomorrow never comes. You know, it's that, it's that kind of depressing, you know, kind of stuff. And, and we sing that. And say we're in faith when really there's a new song that comes up. Now, when he's given me a new song, he's given me a promise first when I've been at prayer. See, I did the talking and I did the listening. These are all aspects of prayer. You, you talk, you listen, he reveals, you stand on what he reveals, you take it, it's yours. Come hell or high water, I ain't let go of this thing. Right? And I'm not talking any different. I'm not singing the tune of, of the sorrow of whatever. I'm only going to sing the new song he gives me. All right? And um, it might be harder for, for people that maybe your avenues, because there is an avenue the brain develops when you are developing in music. You know, it would make sense that um, little Seth is, is very musical because they were leading praise all the time. She's in the womb, all the music is going. I mean, so their, their brains are a little bit more gravitated toward that. But he can give all of us a new song. And what I mean is sometimes he'll have you sing over your situation. And it won't be Chris Tomlin stuff. It'll be Holy Ghost stuff. You ever have that happen? Just a phrase sometimes. I mean, it can be just something as I have the victory. I walk around my house, I have the victory. I have the victory and I just start singing well who wrote that I don't know Holy Ghost is writing it right now right and I began to sing it and it will just it causes an anointing the anointing of God to come up with something fresh and new you know why because praise puts hope in motion and hope activates your faith that's why it's not good to sit and listen to secular music you're going through something and, and just like the song I sang, tomorrow never comes. And you're just like, yeah, I got to pray God's going to do something. I said, yeah, the anointing's really on that song to help you out. <laughs> it's not there. What is the song he's giving you? And he'll give you word. He'll give you revelation. He'll give you a rhema. He'll give you a new song. Now, the wild part is I've watched this over the years when it comes to open heavens. Many times, we, we don't even know. We, we, we look back and could see it. It doesn't mean it happens every year. But all of a sudden, there'll be a, a shift up. And there'll be a song that stands out. It just seems to happen that way. And it's like, that's a new song. I don't care if it was written two years ago. Um, here it is. It's the new song that says, this is where we're going. And we unites us in that song. And we come up. And then you'll find yourself walking around the house singing that song. Oh, I can't get that song out of my head. You don't want to. It's the new song. Make sense? Praise you, Lord Jesus. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with a loud and joyful sound. Ah, so I know I'm scriptural. <laughs> so many times. Uh, you know, but, uh, there's so much science even behind it. Now, it doesn't mean you always be loud because sometimes in that prayer time, being quiet is the most powerful thing you can do at the moment. Just shut up. Don't say anything. And it's powerful. 
But there's other times that even if you study the, the vibrations uh, uh, of the the energy coming out of your, your voice and what it's doing in the atmosphere. I, I don't know that it doesn't necessarily say God was loud, but I doubt he went, light be. I just doubt he did that. I think his creative side just went, light be. Right? And uh, no, I know one translation is, let's let there be light, but the original says, light be. He commanded it. Otherwise, you put the word let, let there. It's chancy. You don't know. Let there be. I mean, uh, uh, hope. Let there be whatever. It's not a sure thing. When you say light be, there it is. And the vibrations coming through that power go out into the atmosphere. Now add some instruments to that. Get the drums going in the background. Ah. That's why they sent the praisers out first in a time of war. See it? So awkwardly, we've had prayer meetings where the Lord said, no music. Oh, just makes people crawl. And part of that, I think, is because um, Holy Spirit wanted us to actually talk to him and listen without any interruption. Then toward the end of that, then we turned music on. And, oh, well, then now it was time to do that. Sometimes prayer lines, no music. And, and if we're trained traditionally or we're trained religiously, all of a sudden it's like, why don't they have the music on? Well, sometimes it's not supposed to be. Sometimes it's just we're going in that one avenue and that's what we're doing. That's what Holy Spirit wants us to do. Then other times you add the instruments and then God will give you a new song. Let's stand. Here this morning, I want to encourage you uh, I think it's gotten better, probably the best it's ever been. Um, we come from all different backgrounds, Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, I mean, all different backgrounds. We've been trained by different churches how, how it should be. So the one thing that ends up happening is when we begin to sing in the spirit yeah. or pastor, uh, Holy Spirit will tell pastor to just say, let's just sing whatever comes to your heart. You know, it's how I get funk. It just gets funky. You're like, well, I don't, I don't know if I could write a song right now. You know, well, don't. Don't. Just pick the tune that the, the band is playing, if that's the easiest way to do it, and begin to sing it. I mean, it can be as simple as, I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you're in the center of my heart. And you begin to sing those things. But it doesn't sound like what the person next to you is, and then that just sounds really messy. I'm giving you permission to get messy during praise and worship. Because the training that we have is like, no, it's like, and here's the choir, here we go. Why are you singing? Something different than everyone else is singing. Because that's what time it is right now. And your new song will sound different than my new song. 